we uh, do not celebrate it, we, we, we still keep the readings of the 50 days because the priority for celebration of the celebration of the feast is it comes to the resurrection feast. But still, this is it's a local feast for our Coptic church, and uh, it's a big festival. Usually, um, um, uh, 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 the church celebrates in Egypt this with very great honor, uh, because this is a very particular feast the Coptic church uh, celebrates the entrance, because the only country visited by our Lord Jesus and the Mother. St. Mary, uh, his mother, and St. Joseph, the Holy Family, uh, it was Egypt. So the Egypt, it was the only country he, uh, he fly to. And also, there is uh, a many prophecies in the Old Testament was talking about Egypt. Especially, I can invite all of you tonight to read the uh, chapter Isaiah, chapter 19. Because uh, Isaiah, chapter 19, is full of many prophecies about Egypt. Of course, uh, some people, they misunderstood the, the, these uh, prophecies because it uh, it little bit some words, it could scare or it misunderstood by some. But uh, what is uh, joyful on this prophecy in the very beginning of the prophecy in the chapter Isaiah 19, uh, Isaiah said the burden against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into Egypt. Most of the fathers in, in their commentaries and interpretation of this verse, they said the swift cloud was St. Mary. Because St. Mary left the child Jesus uh, and flight to Egypt with him. That's why we took this uh, a prophecy even in the Coptic art, when you look to the cloth, the, the garment of St. Mary, you find always they put the garment in blue and it has a stars. Because why it has a stars? We call St. Mary as a second heaven. The place where the God uh, lives is heaven. And when he was incarnated and became a little child, he came through St. Mary. So and St. Mary became like a heaven for him. So that's why her garment also in any of the icons you find has a stars. Um, so it says here, Behold the rites on a swift cloud uh, and will come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter at his presence and the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst. And if, if you see here, the idols of Egypt will totter at his presence. And this is according to the Pope's Theophilus manuscript, because the one who narrated the whole trip, you can find it online to read it more in details, the manuscript of St. Theophilus, the Patriarch 23rd. He wrote about the flight, uh, the, the visit of the Holy Family to the land of Egypt in details. Where did they go? Where did they stay? Where did they do in the land of Egypt? But most of the tradition, they said that when they entered from place to place, the, um, the, the idols uh, got tottered at his presence and destroyed. That's why when he entered a place and then happened this for a, an idol's temple, the people of this city or village, they kick them out. So they go to another place go another place until they come to uh, the uh, middle of the Egypt, which is now located St. Mary in Muharraq Monastery. And if you go for the last of the chapter, it says also um, there is an altar will be in the middle of land of Egypt, which is the altar of, uh, uh, of the monastery now. And whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt, my people. Not everyone. He said, my people. And in Arabic, we say, Shabi. Shabi, it's not Shab. We find in pronunciation in Arabic, Shab, it means all people. But Shabi, it's a, a particular people, even in Arabic. 
So here it's my people and the Assyria, the work of my hands and Israel, my inheritance. So when he said, blessed my people, it's uh, 19, uh, uh, Isaiah 19, 25. But I would like to focus very quickly about the first spiritual meaning of this feast on the church. The first spiritual meaning was that the Lord has been willing to remove his anger from this land. You know, in the very beginning of the Old Testament, there was an anger from God because the people, Israelites, and, uh, I'm sorry, the Egyptians, when they uh, captured the Israelites inside the land of Egypt, and they had to go. So, uh, and many, uh, many things happened during that time. So they said that God wanted to show how his forgiveness and how he was going to replace the old by the new and the cares by the blessing. And this is the meaning. That he changed it after the, the whole land is, is, uh, in Egypt was uh, worshipping idols. It turned to be worshipping God. And that was Moses when he took his the people of God and, and started to go for his journey to the desert and Pharaoh followed them. It was to, uh, uh, to, to, to capture them in, in this and return it back to the to, to land of Egypt. So God wanted to, wanted to change what was written in the prophecies about Egypt in this very beginning in uh, Exodus, a book of Exodus, into the blessing of Egypt. The second spiritual meaning also is for coming of Christ into the land of Egypt, the meaning of escape from evil. And this is, it's also, it gives us an, a, a lesson in our life. How sometimes you uh, confront or you say that some evil acts is coming to you. Should we comfort this or, or, or should we accommodate these evil works in our life? Or should we go and uh, face this evil in our work, or we should escape and flee from this. Our Lord Jesus Christ could have destroyed Herod, Herod when he was he was the God and he did almighty works, and he could destroy. But he did not use uh, he did not use his power to destroy people, but he used it to. Turn the people into peace. When you flee from the evil acts, you may move the heart of the one who wants to do evil to you into good. Sometimes it happens uh, um, by his coming. Uh, it happens to us many times in work, in family, in friends, or something. You find someone is uh, uh, offer hatreds or offer offers something bad to me or he does something uh, evil uh, uh, work or act. Should I just stay and revenge myself or I flee? The, fl the flight of the Holy Family in Egypt in our Lord Jesus Christ, how he could flee from this? He did not stay in front of the evil, but he left the evil for a while until the crucifixion. That by his coming uh, uh, to Egypt, our Lord gave us the key of the practical application of his command to escape evil, not to resist it. In Our Lord also escaped from the face of the king, Herod. And his escape is not based on uh, scare from Herod uh, and does not come out of his weakness. But his escape is based on divine plan. That's why when you face something bad in your life, it could understood by myself in the moment of this is happening to me, it could be like, uh, why God allow this? Why I go through all these difficult times? It could be there is a plan in my life, God do it to me, plan it in me, I may not understand in this moment, but I know it later on. That's why many times in your life, when you go back in your life, you say, oh, that's why God made this to me. Why 
That's why God moved me from this place to place. Uh, that's why I, uh, I sometimes I get laid off work in this and I got another job. It could be for, for time I got this kicked from this job or something. I got sad and I got, but I don't understand what's God plan in my life. So when I submit my life into the hands of God, I can read the plan of God in my life. So, um, so he made the journey to Egypt to fulfill the divine purpose of redemption, aiming to redeem all of mankind. Um, the third spiritual meaning is that our Lord Jesus Christ entering into Egypt is to establish a temple for the Lord in the midst of land and Egypt, and to abolish and destroy the uh, idolatries, temples spread and preventing the whole land to turn. And if you look to all the places where the family, the Holy Family visited, it turned it into a monastery or a, a church. Even, even the tree, they shadowed uh, under, it became a holy tree. If you go to Egypt and visit in Mataria, you find an old tree. The branches, it's from first century, and it kept until now. And they said that the Holy Family came and they stayed this, under this tree. You visited another place, you find a water well. They said that the Holy Family drank from this water, so it became a holy water. And so on, any place, even uh, the place where St. Mary, that tradition, all of this we receive it by tradition. They said uh, St. Mary uh, gave a shower to the baby Jesus in this place. Even this place narrated that this place is that uh, St. Mary did that in this place, so it's a blessing. Even she packed uh, a bread, there is a place in Delta, uh, there is a, a, a spot, a big spot, marble, they said that she put uh, flour and water and she packed uh, to eat in this one. It became, until now, kept this and so on. So if you go to Land of Egypt, they came from the very northern part of Egypt. They go, they go up and then west and then south. If you look to the map of Egypt, you find that the like family made like a cross on the land of Egypt. Because they came from... Uh, 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 eastern, northern, and then they go north, and then west to Wadi Natur, and then south to Asu. So if you look to the map, it's like they meet across, and so on. That's why the land of Egypt was blessed by the Holy Family uh, visit. Um, um, uh, as I said, that Isaiah the prophet prophesied, so that the Lord would make himself known to the Egyptians. Who were the Egyptians? We are the, our our heritage, the people they lived in Christ. So he himself is known to the Egyptians. And in that they will acknowledge uh, the Lord. They will worship with sacrifices and grain offerings. They will make vows to the Lord and keep them. So this is the heritage of the people of the, uh, Egypt because the land of Egypt, as you know, that until the 7th century, Turn it to Christianity. They were the old Holland of Egypt were uh, worshiping uh, Christ, and the idols of Egypt trembled, and uh, the hearts of Egyptians to men. So, uh, this is the, the last fourth meaning of the spiritual meaning of this is the uh, the Lord's journey to Egypt is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Hosea. Hosea, Hosea also prophesied, not only Isaiah. In book of Hosea, he said, out of Egypt I called my son. Because the, the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and then said to him, take the child and his mother and go back to uh, Israel, to Jerusalem. When Israel was a child, I loved him. He said Hosea, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. So he called his son from Egypt. Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he came to Egypt, he was a stranger that had no 
support and no place to lean his head upon. Uh, as I explained to you, he moved from city to city until the, they said that the, the maximum time he stayed, it was a six months, around six months in a cave, it still exists in uh, Asyut. So when you visit the monastery of Dronka and monastery, you find uh, two caves. Uh, this tradition, they said, Mother and Saint Mary on the left one was uh, child Jesus, and the other one, Saint Joseph the carpenter, used to sleep on this cave. So the post of the post caves. So we won't be like our Lord Jesus Christ, considering ourselves like strangers, having nowhere to rest in this world. So our rest, it is not in this world. So we look up to the heaven. Uh, and thank God, tomorrow we will celebrate the entrance of our Lord into Egypt. On Thursday, we say, we'll, we're going to celebrate the Feast of Ascension. So it comes together that's in the June 1st and June 2nd, we celebrate both pieces. And on the Ascension, we look like the apostles, when our Lord Jesus Christ lifted up to heaven, they looked up. They don't look down until he disappeared from their vision. And the angels came and said to him, them, as you have seen him lifting up to heaven, he would come again. And in this faith and in this belief, we still live that there is something called second coming. He will come again. When, we do not know, but we have to ready for this time. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who entered into the land of Egypt, give us this blessing of this uh, feast and glory be to God now and forever.